In this episode, we hear from an airport worker who thinks they uncovered something very strange. Then we hear from some guys who had a run-in with an unknown beast in Colorado. Then we travel to Monterey where there is something very odd and large flying in the sky. And finally, down to the Dominican Republic where we hear from someone who saw a flying creature. But before we get into the stories, if you want strange and weird news every single day, visit dreadsarmy.com. And if you want to be part of the discussion, sign up for the forums and let's chat with each other. Now let's get to the stories. This story was sent in to stories at dread.army. Hey there, Dread. I'm enjoying your channel, and I thought you'd be interested in something weird I noticed at Los Angeles Airport. I drive an aviation fuel truck at LAX, so I get all around the airport and I pretty much see everything. Most days, though, I'm close to the terminal, refueling planes before they take off. One day, when I'd just driven back to the fuel farm to refill the truck, I got a call asking me to make an unscheduled fueling. They said the plane I was supposed to do next hadn't arrived anyway. I was told to go out to this hangar that I'd never been to before. Since we usually refuel planes at the terminal, I was kind of surprised. When I got out to this small hangar, I saw just one small regional jet sitting outside. I checked, and it was the one I was supposed to refuel. So I attached the ground wire and then the fuel hose like I always do. While I waited for the plane to fill up, I looked around and noticed there was another hangar, a few hundred feet away or so from the one I was at. That hangar kind of looked old, and it was fairly small too, not big enough for an Airbus A350 or something like that. As I watched, black cars and SUVs kept coming and going by that little hangar. Instead of the mechanics and fuelers who wear orange safety vests like me, I saw guys wearing black or blue jumpsuits. I don't know, it wasn't just the outfits. Something about them looked different than regular airport workers. The small plane didn't take long to get fueled. I took off the ground wire, disconnected the hose, and got back into the truck, and recorded it on the refuel sheet. Once I finished, I looked over towards that hangar again. I didn't see anyone going in or out, just cars parked in front, so I decided just to drive by it on my way back to the terminal. I didn't think anyone would notice a fueling truck just getting a little too close to it. I don't know why, but when I got close, I decided to roll down the window. I didn't get more than 50 feet or so from the cars parked in front but I heard a banging noise coming from inside the hangar. It didn't sound like anything you'd expect to hear from a hangar. Not like a plane engine or a mechanic working on a plane. When I heard that noise, I pictured huge fists pounding on metal. I don't know why. I told myself I was being crazy, but then I heard a roar coming out of that hangar, like King Kong or something. I rolled up the window and drove away. I was sure something was going on in that hangar. When I got home that night, I checked Google Earth to see if I could find that hangar, but I couldn't see it. It wasn't on the map. It wasn't on the map I had of the hangars at LAX either. I mean, I could see if it was too small to be on my map, but why wasn't it on Google Earth? That was weird. I hadn't seen any signs on it indicating what it was either. I thought I'd try to get over there again sometime and see if I could get a better look at it, but our schedules are pretty tight. We go from one refueling to the next, and there's really no extra time, unless a plane gets stuck at another airport. Finally, one day a plane couldn't make it to LAX because of a mechanical issue, and I had an extra hour to kill. I had to go to the fueling farm to fill the truck, but I had enough time to swing by that hangar. This time, I looked at the hangar itself more closely. I didn't see any markings on it, no names of airlines that use it, no numbers. Just three cars were in front of it this time. One guy came out in a dark jumpsuit as I drove by, but he was hurrying into one of the cars, and I don't think he noticed my truck. After his car pulled away, I drove closer. I rolled down the window and heard banging again. This time, it sounded like a fight. I swear it sounded like two big monsters in there throwing each other around against the walls. But I don't know. Maybe it was something else. All I know is it didn't sound normal. The next day, I was really surprised that I got a break again. In fact, I had even more time because a bunch of flights got grounded in Chicago for weather. We were just sitting around with hardly any planes to refuel. When the truck needed more fuel, I headed back to the fuel farm with at least a two-hour break ahead of me. This time, I went to that smaller hangar that I'd first seen that weird hangar from. I thought if I parked near it for a while, no one would notice. 
I sat there and ate my lunch, just kind of idly watching the mysterious hangar. From that far away, there was no way I could hear anything, even with the windows down, so I just watched. Cars came and went, and then a plain white truck that looked like a big moving van backed in. The driver didn't get out. I wondered if they were loading something into the back. A few minutes later, another truck just like it backed in. I was going crazy wishing I could see what they were doing, but the way that they were backed in totally blocked my view. Both vans pulled out after that. All the cars parked there slowly left. Once they were all gone, I drove the truck up to the hangar. I got really close this time and rolled down the window. I heard nothing. It was totally quiet. I figured whatever was in that hangar was gone. They must have taken it away in the trucks. I still don't know what it was. Since then, any time I manage to go by that hangar, it's totally quiet. But something tells me that they're going to put something else in there. I'm going to keep watching it and see what happens. This story was submitted on dreadsarmy.com. Hey Donovan, about five years ago, me and a buddy of mine decided to do a long road trip during the summer. We were just out of college and we wanted to go look around the country before we got tied down to a job. We wanted to travel around the U.S. and kind of scope out different areas to see if a particular state might appeal to us. We had spent our whole lives living in Missouri, and that was all we really knew. We spent most of our time camping in the U.S. Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management areas. We were driving my four-wheel drive pickup truck, so we could really get back into some fairly deep wilderness on the forest roads. After about a month on the road, we ended up on some land near Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park in Colorado. It was our last night in Colorado, and we were exhausted from doing a 14-mile hike earlier that morning. Colorado had been a real venture for us, with those incredible Rocky Mountains. There was an option of camping at the National Park, but that would have cost us money. We were still basically just broke college kids. We had found the GPS coordinates for a dispersed camping site online. That led us to the end of a paved road in the evening around 7 p.m. We came to this dirt road that went up through some trees and brush. It didn't look well traveled at all, but that was how we tended to like it. Those out of the way kind of roads had taken us up some pretty spectacular scenery. This dirt road made its way to the top of a hill that had some amazing views of snow-capped mountains. We didn't pass a car the entire way up. It was a pretty rough road, but my truck made it up to the campsite easily. When we got there, we sat in the truck, scoping it out. It wasn't the best site we'd been to, but it wasn't the worst either. There was no restroom of any kind, but there was a fire pit and lots of trees. But we also saw an abandoned couch and some other odd signs of human trash. It actually started feeling a little bit off-putting. The vibes were kind of weird, but it was getting late and we were too tired to look for something better. We got out of the truck and started walking around. We found some garbage bags wrapped in duct tape. I was like, this seems like a place that we would find a body or something. My friend agreed. Neither one of us loved the setting. We noticed a trail that seemed to go up in a circle around the top of a hill. We decided to check that out before we committed to staying. We found some more trash and what looked like old clothes, but nothing that made us feel like we should leave. It was getting close to dark, so we decided to cowboy camp instead of setting up all of our gear. That meant just sleeping on a tarp in our sleeping bags under the stars. That 14-mile hike we did earlier that day had really taken it out of us, and we weren't completely used to the altitude yet. Back in Missouri, we were at something like 500 feet altitude, and now we're up over 8,000 feet. We figured we would get a nice fire going and have a few by the fire. But even with a nice buzz going, we still felt a little uneasy. Every couple of minutes, one of us would shine a light into the woods. We kept thinking that we heard something, even though this was like our 30th consecutive night sleeping outside. It didn't exactly feel comfortable. But it was late, so we started getting ready for bed. We had our bear spray and headlamps ready. I stepped into the woods to go to the bathroom and walked in about 10 feet into the trees. I was standing there and I started hearing this sound of something crashing through the woods. I turned on my headlamp and my knees almost buckled. In the center of my beam was a bunch of bleached bones lying there in a pile. 
That in combination with the crashing sounds was giving me some serious panic. If I hadn't already been going to the bathroom, I probably would have went in my pants. I yelled out to my friend, get over here. I don't know why I just didn't run back to the truck. He ran over and shined his headlamp on the scene in front of us. That's when we started hearing this growling sound and smelling this horrible garbage smell, like really rotten garbage. We were kind of just mesmerized by the sight of those bones, and we kept angling our headlamps back and forth to try to illuminate the trees as much as we could. Then our lights caught sight of this demonic-looking face with a large snout. Whatever it was was just crouching there, snarling at us. Then, all of a sudden, it stood up on its back legs. It looked something like a giant hyena, about six or seven feet tall. The consensus between us was, screw this. We ran back to our camp and threw our stuff into the truck, and we got the hell out of there as fast as we could. We drove down that pitted dirt road faster than I ever thought possible. I kept driving until we got to the National Park campground. I never felt so happy to pay $25 and have neighbors nearby. It scared the bloody hell out of us, and we still have no idea what it was. This story was sent in to stories at dread.army. Hey Donovan, I'm a new subscriber, and I've been binge watching and listening to your content. You're in luck. I've been wanting to tell this story, but I haven't found the right place to do so until now. Ever since I can remember, I've had an interest in the paranormal and alien UFO phenomena. My ex, with whom I was with at the time of this experience, was far from that. Right out of the Air Force, she became a cop for a nearby town. Her father was a cop, and I believe his father was a cop. So needless to say, they were pretty thick-skinned. About 10 years ago, I was at her place in a small town called Pacific Grove, near Monterey Bay. She lived right off the ocean in a short walk from what's called Lover's Point. Well, one night I was over at her place and we decided to take her dog for a walk. I hated that dog and that dog didn't like me, but walk we did. It was around 8.30 p.m. Completely dark out, we started walking out towards the ocean, then down the roads towards Lover's Point. As you get closer to Lover's Point, you can see over across the bay, overlooking Monterey and Seaside. There is an embassy suites in Seaside, which is dead straight on as you walk up to the point. It's the tallest building on the city skyline. As we got closer to the point, I told her, wow, look at that star. It's a bright one. She asked, what star? I said, the one next to the embassy suites building. Right at that moment, I realized it wasn't a star. It was a plane, possibly a helicopter. We both stared at it thinking, what in the heck is that? The bright light continued to slowly move towards us. We could see the light reflecting off the ocean as it cruised right over the bay. We just stared dumbfounded trying to figure out what it was. It continued to come in our direction until it glided right over us, then banked left and glided over Pacific Grove, then Monterey, and eventually flew out of sight. This was massive. As it glided right over us, I could see it was triangular-shaped, with round lights emitting from the bottom. They were symmetrically oriented under the craft. It had a triangular tail wing to it, with round lights shooting out of the back. It must have been five or six hundred feet above us, and it was huge. The whole time we're watching it, I could still hear the waves crashing down the hill, about 80 feet away. So this thing was silent. Absolutely no noise. Now, I'm a believer, but my ex wasn't, and she kept saying, whoa, what is that? Wait, what is that? I had just bought a new smartphone, but neither one of us were smart enough to pull it out and take pictures of this. It was jaw-dropping and stunned us to where the last thing on our mind was to take pictures. After it cleared the sky, we slowly walked back to her place in pure amazement, shock, and all around, like, what in the heck just happened feeling. The moment I walked in, I hopped on the computer to check out the local outlets, or to see if anyone else called that in. She was still in shock. To my surprise, no other reports were made, and I was checking on it all night and the following days. Someone else had to have seen this thing. It glided so effortlessly over the bay in the city. It was big. It blocked out most of the sky as we looked straight up. 
For it to be silent like that to where we could hear the waves crashing, it either was far higher than I thought, which would have made this thing a mile wide at least, or it was a silent flying craft. Far, far too large to be a drone. Plus, there was no buzzing sounds. Nothing. Completely silent. The following days, I thought, did that really happen? She was now a believer, and I finally got to see an unidentified flying object. Don't take my word for it. She is since married, which I'm not sure what her new last name is, but you can look her up. Her name is Jessica Smith, and she works at the police department. I believe she currently lives in Monterey. She wouldn't want to hear from me, but if you ask her to corroborate this story, I guarantee she will tell you the exact same thing I said. I've been wanting to tell this story, but wanted the right place to do so. I like the way you narrate and everything sounds very credible. Her and I don't talk anymore. It's been 10 years since we last spoke. She doesn't like me whatsoever, but I know she will stand behind the story if asked. Here is a rough idea on what this thing looked like. I will never forget it. I may be off on the number of round lights on the bottom, but you get the idea. It looked like something from Star Wars or something. It appeared to be smooth, but the light was so bright under it. It was hard to tell the color or any other features. Please let me know if you need any other information. I told my wife this morning, this is the guy I want to tell my story. I'm sure you get a lot of emails, so I completely understand if this doesn't make the cut. You have great content either way and happy to be a new subscriber of your channel. This story was posted on the forums on dreadsarmy.com. Hi folks, I live in the Caribbean, specifically the Dominican Republic. I'm going to share my first story here. One night back in early 2003, we had just moved into our new apartment. I will always remember that night for as long as I live. I was sitting on the balcony, we lived on the third floor. It was around 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The lights had gone out, but the night was quite clear, so to speak, since the moon which was behind me must have been either full or quite close to it. I was sitting on a chair facing north, when all of a sudden I saw this creature that flies by. I said, wow, this bat has got to be huge. The wings were pointy like the wings of a bat. It must have been around 250 to 300 meters from where I was standing. The wings moved graciously up and down, not like an actual bat. It was flying straight ahead, unlike a bat which flies, you know, erratically, so to speak. It lasted just a few seconds. I would say its height must have been similar to an average person's, and maybe it was around 25 to 30 feet off the ground. When I actually understood that what I was seeing was a gargoyle, I said, no way. No such thing exists. Boy, was I wrong. Such sightings are common in Puerto Rico and all over Central and South America. I remember when I was a kid in the 80s, such stories were pretty common in my country. People would tell tales about winged beings that would come down at night over rural and not so rural areas. Such beings would snatch infants away, but I never believed in such stories. My mom told me when I was 17 that one evening, when I was just a few months old, she heard the sound of some big wings flapping. There was this big tree in our backyard right outside my bedroom. Mom said she heard when the thing came down on the tree, and she already had heard stories of this back then, so she yelled at it. She was aware that it was there, and she was willing to kill the thing if needed in order to protect her child. That thing left and never came back as far as I know. But for as long as we lived in that house, I had no peace at night. Let me know what you think about these stories in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out dreadsarmy.com, where you'll find all of my stories and multiple strange and weird news posted every single day. If you want to be part of the discussion, check out the forums on Dreads Army. We also have a Facebook group so you don't miss out on any updates. Thanks and take care.